Our gospel this weekend speaks to us of the need to be ready. We don't know when the Lord will return, and so we need to be ready at all times for His coming. And we do that in many ways. Certainly do that uh, through our prayer, through our uh, trying to live a good moral life. We also express that with our bodies. I spoke a couple of weeks ago about the poverty that we have to experience in prayer. That one of those types of poverty is our poverty of our humanity. That we are bound by space and time. But that we can use that to our advantage if we recognize it and if we work with it. And the same thing applies to our need to be ready. That we can use our bodies to help us to be ready. What do I mean by that? Well, we use different postures at Mass to remind us of what's going on. The very solemn parts of the Mass, right, when the consecration is taking place, when Jesus is present on the altar after the consecration, right, we take a posture of kneeling to show reverence to Jesus on the altar. But I want to speak today on the posture of standing. Right, standing is this posture of readiness. And so we need to be ready in three ways when we stand. And I'm going to relate this specifically to standing to hear the gospel. Right, we sit for the other readings, but for the gospel we stand up to listen. And this is to show that we need to be ready. And the first way that we need to be ready, or the first thing that we need to be ready for as we stand to listen to the gospel is we need to be ready to receive what it is we're hearing. Right? The church teaches that the gospel is the good news. Right? The good news of salvation through Jesus, through the passion, death, and resurrection. And so we need to be ready to receive this good news. Right? As I've told you before, I'm sort of a sports nut. I grew up playing all kinds of sports. And the common theme in every sport is that you can't just be sitting around kind of, you know, lackadaisical, right? You have to get in your ready position. I love baseball over everything because it's the best, no matter what you say. And so I was reading a book this summer called Baseball as a Road to God. And in that book, one part he suggests watching the different players in the field as the pitcher is pitching, right? Usually we're sort of fascinated with the pitcher and the batter, which is sort of the focus. But he suggested to look at all of the other players and see how they prepare for the pitch, right? See how they get themselves ready in case the ball is hit to them so that they can receive it, right? They have to be in that ready position. And in a similar way, this is what we're doing when we stand for the gospel. We're reminding ourselves subconsciously that we need to receive what it is we are hearing. And so that's that first type of readiness, the readiness to receive. And we also have to be ready to respond. We stand to show that we are ready to not only receive what we hear in the gospel, but then to respond to what it is we are told. Right? Jesus always gives us an instruction in the gospel. He's trying to teach us something. He's trying to teach us how we are to live if we want to be able to receive the promises he makes. Right? And so it always calls for a response on our part. Do I respond with faith? Do I respond, again, by trying to live a good moral life? Do I respond uh, to what it is that I have heard in the gospel? Right? We can use this sports analogy again. Right? If I'm in a ready position, but when the ball is hit to me, I stay in my ready position and don't move, that's not really accomplishing what I'm setting out to do. Right? The ball is going to go right by me and my teammates are going to get mad at me. Right? We have to respond to the Word of God when it comes to us, just like that player in whatever game it is has to respond to the ball when it comes to him. Right? has to go for it and respond. Right? And so we need to be ready to respond to the teachings that we hear in the Gospel, which is another reason why we stand 
when we're listening to it proclaimed at Mass. And then the third thing we need to be ready for as we stand to listen to the gospel is we need to be ready to go out and repeat what we've heard. Right? So we receive it, we respond to it in our own lives because the word of God is living and effective. And then we have to go out and repeat what we have heard. Right? We have to become evangelizers. Cardinal Ratzinger, in his book, The Spirit of the Liturgy, is writing about the different postures that we take in prayer. And he says that standing is a posture of the victor. Right? Standing is the posture of someone who has won. Right? If you ever see a boxing match or something, if someone wins, the other guy falls down, a lot of times they'll stand over them. Right? I just beat you. I am the victor. And so I still stand. And he relates this, he doesn't talk about fighting, right? But he relates this posture of the victor, this standing posture, to the Easter season. And he talks about how in the Easter season in the old church, the first few centuries, that during the consecration and those parts where we kneel, in the Easter season, the the faithful would stand. Right, to show that because of the mysteries that we're celebrating, right, the resurrection, passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, that we become victors, right, victors in the fight against sin. And so they stood to remind themselves that they are on the winning side, right, that death doesn't have a hold over them because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. And so again, we stand at the gospel, right, to receive this message that we are victors. And if we take that to heart, right, if we remember that, then we have this confidence, we gain this courage to go out and to proclaim the good news, right, to go out and to repeat what it is that we have received and responded to. And so even though it may seem uh, to outsiders, right, that we are doing a sort of liturgical gymnastics, right, sit, stand, kneel, what are we doing, right, it really has a purpose and it matters and it helps us to remember what we're doing. Again, Cardinal Ratzinger writes, standing prayer is an anticipation of the future, of the glory that is to come. When we stand, it reminds us that we're not yet there. When we get where we want to go, we sit down. But this standing reminds us that we are on a pilgrimage, that we are on a journey to another place. And he goes on that standing is meant to orient us toward that goal, towards heaven. And so far as liturgical prayer, what we do at Mass, is an anticipation of what has been promised, Standing is its proper posture. Right? So we stand to receive the promise and to be reminded of the goal. Right? That we're not that there yet, that we have to journey towards it, that we still have work to do. And so we pray that we can more and more come to recognize this reality, right? That our posture, how we present ourselves, makes a difference in how we pray. That we need to be ready. Right? We need to gird our loins and be ready when the Lord comes again. And we do that, we practice, right, by standing for the gospel, by being ready to receive his word, by being ready to respond to it in our own lives, and then going out and being ready to repeat it to all who we encounter.